Ooh. Oh, I'm fucking there. Now, in preparation for this ambitious road trip, one would be wise to do some proper and thorough maintenance on the car. We've got coolant, uh, gear oil and motor oil. So I shall be tackling that today. As usual, step one is to jack up the car. And as usual for here, the uh, lower floor here, floor being caved in, is presenting its usual problem. That's the jack going into its place. It's to pop the bonnet. We need a 14 millimeter socket to bring the engine oil. A uh, 10 millimeter Allen. This. Now that's to fill the um, gear oil. To drain the gear oil, I will need a 24 millimeter socket and a 19 at the back of the radiator to drain the coolant. That should be a pretty uh, varied soup we got there. And there's no one in well I'm done. But before all that, I have to remove the splash guard underneath the car. And with the splash tray out, the splash guard, we now have access to the drain plug for Trans and the drain plug over here for the coolant. It's a bit difficult to see, but yeah, right here. Right then. Put the new mirror. Here it goes. Cool about a mag magnetic drain plug. You can't really lose it unless you really try. Don't do that. <laughs> it's best to clean up the oil pan. So that way you don't mistake it for an oil leak instead of just residual oil as it is the case right now Next up is the oil filter. I will admit, in this case, I've made it unwillingly difficult for myself because the oil cooler lines are in the way, and so is the header. So, this is a, a case of slowly but surely. Right, no, not like that. 
This gives me a bit more room to maneuver. It's a bit more finagling than I would like. Oh god. Well, thank god for brake cleaner. Fresh oil filter. It's a YZF1, same as on a Matrix XRS. That I found out myself. An old technique is to take some oil and lube the O-ring. But as you may be able to see, this is already greased up. So I do not believe that additional lubricant is necessary. I'm just gonna send it. And yes, I have done it before without any issues. So, I know it works. I can actually be good enough. So, next up is drain, drained transmission. Finally, success. So I could also feel she was starting to strip. The bolt was starting to round out. That is not good. Yes. Here, here, you can see the bolt is starting to round out. But then, let's drain this somewhat. Yeah. It's a bit harder to reach than I thought it would be. Yep, yeah, it's making a mess. Damn. I knew it a bit more fluid once you uh, pop the top, but this is fucking ridiculous. Why is it orange? <laughs> Seriously, that shit is orange. And I don't mean the gloves, I mean the coolant. I distinctly remember putting in green stuff, like Preston brand. Boy oh boy did I get lucky. I just had to push the car out a little bit. But there is enough hose. That's not a lot of power. The hose is long enough to reach the car, so that's a win. Right. And it's the time for the ZX coolant by Valvoline. Ooh, nice print. Let us 
let's see if I can pour it without making a mess. I should be able to, but then again, let's see how I can fuck this up. I think she burped at me. Right then, filling up the gear oil. There is a slight rate angle, but oh well. Get some Kestrel 8090. And something that is a Quebec product. Got some uh, Hypertech. Or is it Hypertech? I mean, it's from Quebec and it's French. But yeah, this is some uh, LSD treatment. So according to my dad, you put in half the bottle, which is like blood. Fill the rest with gear oil. It'll do. Well, after a well-deserved break, the only fluid left to fill up is the engine oil. I use April Synthetic 5W30 oil. It's not a very well-known brand, but again, it's a case of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I've never had any issues with it. So, let us proceed. Let's see. Let's poke. There we go. That's one use for the dipstick you don't see often. Easy now. Ah, damn it. I made a mess. It should be noted. It should be noted that I wanted to say that it should be noted. I will not be attempted to patent a David Pratt long pour. Especially not from a ladder. He has years of training in tomfoolery and shit manigans that I do not have. But, the one thing that I do have that he doesn't, at least not yet, is a 40G20 valve. <laughs> Take that, Speed Academy. Okay, final one. Ah, a bit of a mess again. See, this is why I don't attempt the uh, David Pratt long pour. I suck at the short pour to begin with. Although, it needs to be said that Dave uses the um, Valvoline products with the uh, Easy Pour spout on them. So. I uh, chalk it up as an, unfair, as an unfair advantage. It's not that he's that good, he just got better shit to work with. That's that done. I was, it's a bit over, but honestly, once I start it up, the fuel filter will fill up. As will the uh, cooler lines, so that's actually just about right. Well, that's a 
are up on the maintenance side of things and you will notice she's smoking a bit. That's because, oh wow dude, look at that. Science in effect, children. But yes, um, I had the cap off and it eventually overflowed a bit. And I hosed it down. So this is just condensation from the, the water evaporating from the uh, radiator. So, not a big concern. It's all right. It'll pass by simply driving. No stress. So like I said, that is a wrap on the maintenance. And next time I see y'all, I'll be vlogging my progress on my way to Toronto Motorsport Park, which is in Cayuga, not in Toronto. But yeah, on my way to the Speed Academy track day. Wish me luck.